lifetime prevalence for somatization disorder varies between genders. Less than 0.2% of males are diagnosed, compared to the 0.2 to 2% of females diagnosed with somatization disorder. There is little information available due to the difficulty in defining and correctly diagnosing this disorder. In the United States, 1 in 500 people are diagnosed with somatization disorder. That's roughly 544,000 people who currently have the disorder. This is Shannon's story. Hey! Hi! How are you? I'm, I'm okay, how are you? Okay, how was your weekend? Uh, it was long. I haven't been feeling well. My stomach hurts, my head hurts. I know. Yeah. Well, it's so beautiful out. I was gonna go for a walk. Would you wanna come? Uh, I can't. My feet hurt really bad. I can't even walk right. My knees hurt. I don't think running would be a good idea. Somatization disorder is a psychological condition characterized by the manifestation of multiple physical symptoms, primarily feelings of pain, which have no known biological causes. These symptoms are often severe enough that the individual undergoes unnecessary hospitalizations and surgeries. An individual really does suffer from these various symptoms. They are not imagined. The diagnostic criteria must satisfy four conditions. The individual must exhibit four pain symptoms, such as headaches or pain in the body or joints, two gastrointestinal complaints, such as nausea or bloating, one unexplained sexual symptom, such as loss of libido or regular menstruation, and one pseudoneurological symptom, such as seizures or paralysis. At least three of the symptoms must present themselves before the age of 30. In order to be diagnosed with somatization disorder, all other medical reasons for the symptoms must be ruled out. Oh, I, well, I just haven't been feeling well. I went to the doctor, the doctor said there was nothing wrong. I went to a different doctor, they say there's nothing wrong, but I hurt everywhere. And they just keep telling me there's nothing wrong with me, but I know there's something wrong. I just don't understand. You're still having all those pains? Yeah. Well, my doctor, Dr. Beasley, he's right downtown in San Luis Obispo, you could try him. He's been really nice, and I believe you that your pain is real, and I'm sure he would too. Okay, maybe I'll try that then. So based on what you told me, um, my belief is that you have what we call somatization disorder, and for now, send you to a cognitive behavioral therapist. But if I have more pain, I can come back. Of course, if you're experiencing pain in a couple weeks, and you haven't noticed any improvements, you can come back in, and we can reevaluate you, and the best route to take for treatment. We'll check on you in, two, in about two weeks and uh, we'll see how you're doing tonight. Some of the more medically supported causes of somatization disorder include a disturbance of attention mechanisms, negative or catastrophic thinking, abnormal neuronal pathways caused by the inappropriate release of neurotransmitters, and a deficiency of prefrontal cortical function involved in inhibitory modulation of stimulus intensity. In other words, the individual's brain cannot decrease the intensity of a perceived stimulus, such as pain, so the brain registers the full response. Other possible explanations for a somatization disorder stem from a psychological perspective. One theory suggests that the patient is allowing themselves to occupy the sick role, or self-victimizing, and exhibiting physical symptoms to avoid psychological ones. The severity and consistency of trauma and psychological distress at a young age has been shown to correlate positively to the number of physiological symptoms presented by an individual. Several studies have found associations between insecure attachment styles and an increased reporting of somatic symptoms. There is also a high presence of comorbidity associated with somatization disorder. And individuals most commonly suffer from substance abuse disorders, anxiety disorders, mood disorders including depression, and certain types of personality disorders in addition to their somatic symptoms. So Shane, why don't you tell me why you're here today? Oh, uh, well, <clears throat> I've been having a lot of pain in my body in many different places and um, for a long time I've gone to my doctor, I've gone to other doctors, I've had two surgeries, um, one on my knee, one on my stomach, and neither of them have helped with the pain. Every diagnosis so far has been wrong. My main physician said that I may have somatization disorder and that I should see a therapist. Okay, I definitely think that you can um, benefit from therapy. 
Um, I, I, I definitely can see how that pain is real and I think we can work through it together. There are a variety of methods available for the treatment of somatization disorder and its symptoms. Pharmacological interventions can be utilized in conjunction with therapy or as an alternate method. Medications typically treat symptoms for comorbid disorders and not for somatization disorder itself. However, effective management and treatment of comorbid disorders has been shown to resolve somatic symptoms. Antidepressants and anti-anxiety medications, most notably selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, or SSRIs, like Zoloft, Prozac, and Paxil, are prescribed. Additionally, antipsychotics like Solian are prescribed for patients with schizophrenia and somatization disorder. Both types of medications have been linked to improvement in somatic symptoms. Lyrica, a drug used to treat muscle and nerve pain associated with diabetes and fibromyalgia, has demonstrated a positive effect on pain symptoms. This is one of few medications that specifically targets the symptoms of somatization disorder. Cognitive behavioral therapy is the most commonly used treatment method, completed either as individual or group therapy sessions. In these sessions, the patient or patients examine their feelings and thought processes with a therapist to uncover ways in which their negative thoughts or emotions are contributing to their behaviors and the disorder. The therapist works with the patient to change these negative emotions and thoughts, thus minimizing or managing their symptoms. Relaxation and stress management techniques can also be utilized alongside therapy or as a separate method. The diaphragmatic breathing technique, or deep breathing from the diaphragm, can be used in response to stressors in the patient's environment or when physical discomfort and pain arises. This has been shown to reduce physical symptoms. Finally, education of the primary care physician has contributed greatly to the improvement of somatic symptoms in their patients. Validation of a patient's physical symptoms acknowledges their pain and creates a trust between doctor and patient. The research suggests several guidelines that allow primary care physicians to better treat their patients. These include scheduling appointments with patients on a regular basis instead of as-needed appointments, performing brief physical examinations focusing on the area of discomfort at each visit, avoiding unnecessary diagnostic procedures, invasive treatments, and hospitalizations, and finally, avoiding explanations of symptoms with statements such as, this is all in your head. Primary physician care enhanced by knowledge of somatization disorder and coupled with cognitive behavioral therapy has shown the greatest strides in treating somatization disorder. A support network increases the efficacy of a patient's therapies and treatments, making it more likely for their symptoms to decrease in number of occurrences and level of pain or discomfort. Hello. Hi, Shannon. Oh, hi, doctor. How are you doing? Not too bad. How are you? Um, I'm okay. I've been doing better lately. <clears throat> Well, I'm glad to hear that. I'm sure you know it's been a few weeks since you came in and we diagnosed you with somatization disorder. Um, I was wondering, more specifically, how have your pain symptoms been lately? Um, they've been feeling better. I um, don't get headaches as frequently. I don't uh, have them as long. They don't stay all day anymore like they used to. Um, it's more of a few hours. My legs feel a lot better, my knees feel better. Um, my stomach still hurts a few times in the day for a while, but it usually subsides faster than it used to. Okay, well, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. Um, well, I'd say in that case, we should continue with your cognitive behavioral therapy and uh, see if the symptoms continue to get better. And for the meantime, you should probably continue to forego any other routes of treatment for now. And I can check back with you in a few more weeks to see if your symptoms keep improving. Okay, thank you so much, doctor. I really appreciate it. Of course, I'm glad to hear you're doing better. Take care, Shannon. Thank you. So Shannon, I've been seeing you for a couple of months now. I just want to know, like, how's everything going? Um, well, I have actually been feeling a little better. I I actually went to work every day this week. Hey! Hi! Ready for a run? Yeah! So how do you decided to come this time? Yeah, I this. You feeling better? Yeah. Good. I feel a lot better. Good, let's go. Yeah. <laughs>